Hello boys and girls, nice to see you. Well, today I'm going to read some poems, some dinosaur poems. And you can see on the front cover of this collection of poems is a meat-eating dinosaur. And uh, he looks a little bit hungry. The collection's by John Foster and the pictures are by Corky Paul. And Corky's pictures are so wonderful. I want you to see every detail, so I'm going to make my picture a little bit smaller and you can see all the wonderful things in his pictures. Dinosaur poems. And I think Corky has drawn himself. Can you see there's someone with paintbrushes in his back pocket? And the other man in the drawing must be John Foster. And it looks like they're standing in front of a, a very hungry looking dinosaur. I hope he doesn't eat them. Companion. I have an Allosaurus and I take him everywhere and really I can't understand why people stop and stare. He's loving, kind and gentle. He wouldn't hurt a soul unless of course you laughed at him and then he'd eat you whole. Oh, dear me, can you see dinosaur is putting someone in his mouth <gasps> and he seems to have some children in his paw in his claws and there's a little girl trying to stop him but he's a little bit too big for her I think there are two poems here the first one's called my pet dinosaur my dinosaur was getting thinner and so I brought him home for dinner. He ate as fast as he was able. He ate the food. He ate the table. He ate the fridge. He ate the chair. He ate my favourite teddy bear. He is a very naughty pet. He even ate the TV set. Oh dear, I don't think he's a very good pet, do you? And the poem at the bottom is called, Who's There? If you hear a dinosaur knocking loudly on your door, through the keyhole firmly say, Nobody is home today. If the bell should start to ring, tell the beast, no visiting. And if you see there's more than one, turn around and start to run. He's running away. He's not waiting to talk to them. This is a poem called At the Museum. And it's about a dinosaur that had turned into a fossil. I was an ancient dinosaur. I lived so long ago. I walked through steaming jungles and my gait was very slow. I ate the juicy fern plants and I wallowed in the mud. I loved to lie out in the sun and feel it warm my blood. I splashed along the seashore. I squelched in muddy swamps. When I crossed the boiling plains, my feet went stomp, stomp, stomp. My giant footsteps shook the earth. My shadow terrified the tiny waiting creatures who watch me as I died. I was a meal for others, and the skin fell from my bones. A hundred million years went by. My bones turned into stone. A fossil remnant I became, some bones locked in the land, and there I stayed till I was freed and clean by human hands. My bones were put together to make a fine display and you can come to look at me almost every day. Come closer. Can you feel it? It's the jungle of steaming heat and now the ground starts shaking as I walk with giant feet. See the fern trees parting as thunderous and slow I come looking for my dinner but that was long ago. I was an ancient dinosaur, but now you find me here, a message that's been waiting for a hundred 
million years. Brontosaurus. The giant Brontosaurus was a prehistoric chap with four fat feet to stand on and a very skimpy lap. The scientists assure us of a most amazing thing. A Brontosaurus blossomed when he had a chance to sing. The bigger Brontosauruses who liked to sing in choruses would close their eyes and harmonise and sing most anything. They growled and they yowled, they deedled and they dummed, they warbled and they whistled, they howled and they hummed. They didn't eat, they didn't sleep, they sang and sang all day. Now all you find are footprints where they tap the time away. <laughs> Can you see the footprints? <laughs> That's funny. This poem's called Trouble at the Dinosaur Cafe. Down at the Dinosaur Cafe, everyone was doing fine. Steggy was slurping swamp juice while Iggy sat down to dine. Bronto was eating his tree roots and had ordered vegetable pie when in stomped Tyrannosaurus with a wicked gleam in his eye. He read the menu from left to right then gobbled it up in one gulp. He chewed upon it thoughtfully while the paper turned to pulp. You plant eaters are fine, he said, if that's all you want to eat. But I'm a growing dinosaur and my stomach cries out for meat. I need something extra to see me through my day. I do lots of roaring and bellowing. I just can't get by on hay. Steggy stiffened, Iggy trembled, while Bronto fell off his chair. Tyrannosaurus turned his head and fixed him with a stare. There's nothing I like more, he said, than a tasty dinosaur stew. And for extra special flavour, I'll add you and you and you. Oh dear, is he really going to eat them? He is a meat eater after all. Here are two uh, wonderful poems. The first one's called Dinosaur History. Hocus pocus plodding through the swamp. I'm a diplodocus, chomp, chomp, chomp. Grass for breakfast, I could eat a tree. Grass for lunch and dinner and grass for tea. I'm a diplodocus plodding through the swamp. Hocus, rocus, pocus, chomp, chomp, chomp. Good heavens, he looks very hungry. Let me just move my picture and then we can see what's happening in this picture, in this wonderful poem. It's called Stegosaurus. I have a Stegosaurus. He's really rather sweet. But he's very, very fussy about the food he'll eat. I offered him a burger, a plate of egg and chips, a dish of chicken curry, but none would pass his lips. I asked, what would be tasty? I'll get it if I can. He said, I'd better tell you, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> so he wouldn't eat any meat, would he? <laughs> Let's move my picture over again. This one's all about a dinosaur called Ankylosaurus. Clankety, clankety, clank, clank. Ankylosaurus was built like a tank. Its hide was a fortress as sturdy as steel. It tended to be an in inedible meal. It was armoured in front, it was armoured behind. There wasn't a thing on its minuscule mind. It waddled about on its four stubby legs, nibbling on plants with a mouthful of pegs. Ankylosaurus was best left alone. Its tail was a cudgel of gristle and bone. 
clankety, 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 clank, Ankylosaurus was built like a tank. Hmm. He looks very strong, doesn't he? And this poem is about a dinosaur that uh, lived a long time ago. And you can see the little boy is dreaming about what it might have been like uh, under the ground as fossils. Ode to an extinct dinosaur. Iguanodon, I loved you with all your spiky scales, your massive jaws, impressive claws, and teeth like horseshoe nails. Iguanodon, I loved you. It moved me close to tears when first I read that you'd been dead for 90 million years. Oh dear, that's a long time. But what's that little girl doing with a bucket of water, I wonder? <laughs> Look, there's the back cover. And you can see some other books of poems. And here we've got the back and front cover. And here, the front cover. Dinosaur Poems. A wonderful collection. I hope you enjoyed those. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.